Uh, Christoph is uh, one of the founders and the CTO at uh, Prophecy. He's a 25-year veteran in the semiconductor space, and he's done a lot of work in the uh, sensing domain. And he's also one of the pioneers of uh, artificial vision. So today he's going to be talking to us about event sensors for embedded edge AI vision applications. Christoph. All right, uh, thanks a lot, everyone. Um, something is slightly different now. Uh, I trust that some of you, or many of you, hopefully, are actually aware of what event vision sensors are. But I will nonetheless uh, introduce this whole concept a little bit, concisely, I hope, and not taking too much time. And I will, I will go through this, so I introduce that. Uh, I, I actually, one of the main parts of this whole uh, presentation is actually what, what we believe is important for event sensors to be become an, a device that you can actually use in, in edge AI vision systems. And so I, I will talk about this, this system ac, um, aspects and interfacing and, and data protocols, etc. I think this is a very important. And then I will uh, actually introduce uh, the latest uh, sensor design we have implemented that is actually targeting these edge AI vision applications and systems. So. Very quickly, uh, what is actually event-based vision sensing? So let this be a, an arbitrary light signal from, from coming from oh yeah coming from the scene, and uh, some some sensor is, is is receiving this light signal that is evolving over time. So what the conventional image sensor would do it it would actually integrate this light the, the photons that come from from the scene over a certain amount of time, we call exposure time. You would average actually this, this exposure over this exposure time and read out at, at regular intervals this, this data. You do this for all the pixels and you, what you get after each exposure time, you get an image, a frame. And this is uh, actually an image is, as you can see clearly, is a snapshot of, this, of the scene in time and there's, it is totally static, there's zero dynamic information in, in an image. However, in the computer vision, what you're usually interested in mostly is uh, things that, that move, things that change, something that happens in the scene, you want to understand your scene. And if you, if you want to do uh, computer vision and, and uh, actually uh, learn from what's happening in your scene, detect what's happening in your, in your scene, you want, to, you want to extract motion information. And what, what people have been doing over, over, the, over the years is to actually take an, a series of these of this snapshots and, and try to infer motion information from this, from this static data packets, which is, of course, obviously a problem because, for example, as you see from this, from this averaging activities that the, that the pixels in an image sensor do, you, lo you lose all the, all, the, all the fine temporal details. You have from frame to frame, you have potentially large displacement. So Im imagine, for example, that the vision task you want to solve here is to to identify and detect an object like this ball and track its trajectory across the scene. You will have big difficulties if you do that at 30 frames per second or so. If you have large displacement, you may have blur due to, to uh, the, the finite exposure time. So you will, have, you will undersample actually the motion in the scene. On the other hand, this, this gentleman in the background, they do nothing, they just sit there. But you would, you would actually acquire this information over and over again and you would, you would actually not only acquire it, you would store it, you would transmit it, you would process it, and you would throw it away. So this is not a very, very efficient way of doing vision. So what, could, what can you do better? And, and actually biology is showing the way to, to do that because you have different dynamics in different parts of the scene. All these signals that pixel C would be different. So you cannot actually have one, one sampling rate for, for all, this, all the pixels. You, you cannot have an, anymore have a frame rate, but you need to have as many as you have pixels actually. So you want to empower the pixel to, to uh, run its own sampling process. So you would, would need to put the pixels, the single pixel in control of its, of, of its own sampling process. And how can we do this? We change the sampling domain from the time domain to the amplitude domain and sample here. And that means, so every time that the signal changes, if it changes fast, we sample it fast. If it changes slower, we sample it slower. If it doesn't change at all, we, we stop sampling and we stop producing data. And that means we encode the dynamic information of the visual scene in, in what we call events. So we go from this, from this sequence of static images to, to this pixel individual stream of, of data that, event data that uh, describe the dynamics in the scene. 
this looks a little bit like this. So you can see there's a person moving in front of such an event camera. And you see that only things that move that change uh, produce actually this data. You see also that the static background, for example, is not acquired at all. So you have very uh, uh, relevant data for, for a dynamic vision process, but you, you subtract only at, already at the sensor level all the information that you don't need to have. This can be done very fast, so the, the pixels can react to these to this changes in, in, in a time scale of microseconds. You have this, uh, this natural sparsity because you al already reduce or remove all the redundancy in the data. And also this can be done over a very wide range of, of light intensities. So there's it's a very high interest scene dynamic range. This little video that actually is, is comes from, from David Escaramuzza's group at University of Zurich very well highlights sort of what is the difference between frame-based and event-based vision. So you see in event vision you have this very uh, continuous time representation of the visual information, of the dynamic visual information. Why the, the standard camera would produce frames after frame of, of information that you may not need actually. You have this, this blur and, and displacement problems that I was discovering before. So, you, you understand that this, uh, this, this different encoding of visual information is, can be very useful for, for many tasks. We are, we are very interested in what's happening in your scene. Okay, um, so what the challenges are to use actually invent sensors in, in, in real world vision systems. First of all, the, there's a lot of applications in different fields. This is of, of course very good. And we have seen uh, many, many applications that have very different requirements from, from that point of view. So there's, there's different compute platforms, different interface standards, different requirements of, 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 of different applications that, that makes it complicated to actually uh, adapt these sensors. You have this unconventional format of, of the data, of the event data that people are not so used to. Image frames is, is a different thing, but event data is it's much more, much harder to understand and to work with. Also, this, this encoding of the dynamic visual information in, in, this, in this form is, is, is unfamiliar to, to most or many, many vision engineers. We have non-constant data rates. This is terrible for, for system design, of course. And we, we, so far, we don't have any like industry standards for, for interfaces and data protocol and so on. So we have tried to, to take care of all these points here and have designed a new generation of event vision sensors that try to solve some of these problems. So what we mean by integrability and usability of event vision at the edge, I think there are two buckets of, 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 of problems that we need to solve. One is this system integration. So we wanted to, to pre-process already on the, on the sensor the, the event data in a way that they, they are useful and they are optimal for transmission and processing. We want to be compatible to industry standards. So MIPI, for example, or DCMI are interfaces that are widely used in this context. So we want to be there. Also, we want to be able to, and this is very important, I think also for us, because the compute platforms that we would like to use more and more in the future are these non-conventional uh, compute platforms like SNN or neuromorphic processor architectures. For them, we need the very low latency connectivity and also low power is, is very important also in the interfaces. And the second is power optimization. Of course, edge systems also always live on, on low power. They, they live on battery and need to be power efficient. So we have built into this chip a, a hierarchy of power modes, which I will explain in much more detail. We will have ultra low power modes with always on operation and wake up features. We put the power management directly on the chip to optimize even more. And we have an embedded microcontroller to for also for to improve the flexibility and usability at the edge. So very quickly, some uh, as a system on chip of such a sensor would look like this. So we have built this around the 320 by 320 array of pixels with a very small optical format of an inch. Also the, the die is small, 13 square millimeters. This is implemented on a stacked process, uh, a backside illuminated CIS 65 on 40 nanometer CMOS. Pixels are 6.3 micro micrometers. So there's se several features I was already hinting at in the, in the introduction. So we, we have several features at the sensor level, including uh, flexible, reprogrammable region of interest selection. We have temperature sensors, light sensors on the chip and some processing features, which I also will go into a little more detail here. And, uh, we have put a full digital ESP 
we call that event signal processing pipeline on the chip with some pre-filtering, pre-processing, uh, event rate controlling, formatting, etc., to, to comply to different standards and, and file formats, uh, data formats. And also the interfaces I was talking about already, so go, go quickly to some of the features. Um, the first feature we, we built in, so you can actually <coughs> subdivide the, the, the pixel array into, into sectors of, 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 uh, of about 100 by 100 pixels and feed them into what we call a global contrast detector, which is basically similar to, to a single pixel, but it, it simply down samples if you want the, the operation of the, of the whole pixel array. So you <coughs> this can be used, as I will show later, for, for very low power operation of the sensor in kind of a wake-up uh, um, arrangement. So you see that we can, we can detect activity that goes into the field of view of the sensor or activity that moves from one, one of these uh, sectors to another. And from, from, this, from this we can then wake up our own sensor, we can create wake-up signals that go out to, to a system and then wake up, for example, the processor and so on. <laughs> we have this very flexible region of interest that you can you can program. We use this for for several things, like uh, we can uh, remove defective pixels from from the from the stream. We can program fully customizable ROIs and and actually move them around uh, in in real time. So you can you can program your your saliency in, in a dynamic mode. We have an, a dedicated ROI control on the chip that that helps you doing that very very efficiently. Um, for the Digital features, a, as I said, there's a full digital pipeline on the chip that allows you to, to pre-process and, and prepare the data for transmission and, and uh, consumption at, 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 your, at your vision system's compute platform. So there's nice filter, there's anti-flicker filters, which is very important for an event-based sensor, as you will see. We have an edge enhancement filter, event rate control, that will program the an, a limit event rate that, that the interface will never uh, exceed so far, this is very important for system design. Of course, we format the data and send them in, in several formats to one of the two interfaces. Um, so a few, a few of these features, there's, there's this noise filter that you can program freely. There are different thresholds that you can set so that, that the data that are not relevant for, for your applications are filtered very early. This is an important feature here, the anti-flicker filter. As you know that um, many of the light sources today are actually modulated LEDs, obviously, but also fluorescent lights, etc. And which is, this is a terrible thing for an event sensor, as you can imagine. For example, this, on, on the top here, if an image of, of, of a tunnel, we drive through a tunnel here, and all the pixels on the right picture that are in red, these are pic pixels that are, that are uh, stimulated by these modulated light panels in the tunnel at, at 50 or 100 hertz. So this is, of course, this is bad for you produce a lot of data that are useless for your, for your function and you want to get rid of them. So we have built in a, a, a digital programmable anti-flicker filter here. We see a few data for, of that. So this is the, on the x-axis you have the frequency of, the, of this light modulation and on the, on the y-axis this is the, the amount of data that are produced by by the pixel in, as a response to, to this modulated light input. And you can see we can program uh, notch filters that are, we can program this different center frequency and the span and move them wherever you want them. So for example, to, to, to filter out uh, 50 hertz flicker of, of LEDs or, or whatsoever. Also, you can invert this actually and, and make very, very narrow band pass filters here. If you want, for example, to, to track active markers that, that, that blink at a certain frequency, you can, you can remove a, all the other information of, of that, that comes from the scene and, and just concentrate on, on, on your markers. We have a RISC-V CPU on the chip that, that you can use for, for running your own microcode, but we use it already for, for, the, for the initialization of the system, so the time to first data is very much reduced by, in the power-up phase. We use it for power management, for, for shifting between the different power modes that I will quickly introduce in, in, a, in a minute. Um, we can use this to insert uh, metadata into the, into the event stream, such as trigger data, data statistics, frame number, it identifiers, etc. some stuff like that. But we, don't, we do not do any like real event data processing on the chip. The, actually, the CPU doesn't even have access to the, to the full event stream. It couldn't handle it anyways, but it receives uh, the statistical data from different hardware blocks along the pipeline. Um, of course, this is one of the, the biggest problems here that we need to, to uh, be able to talk to various compute platforms from, from 
from say mobile application processors to very low power microcontrollers to even SNN accelerators on this kind so we kind of, of compute platforms. So we have implemented different data formats that the chip can produce, such as uh, just the, the, the stream of, 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 of raw events from, of course, pre-processed by the whole digital pipeline that, um, that go, for example, to a MEP interface to, to, a, to a mobile application processor. We can uh, build on cheap aggregated fi file formats that um, that um, aggregate, for example, for a certain amount of time or a certain amount of, of, of events and, and put them into 2, 2D-like structures similar to frames, but it's typically it's some kinds of histograms or, or binary frames that you can then use, for example, to, to run in a CNN-based algorithm on, the, on your very low-power microcontroller device. Or we can, we can directly stream the events without any timestamps and without anything uh, to into a spiking neural network uh, architecture, for example. So we have these uh, different event streaming formats that uh, compress actually the, the, the events into, into different uh, um, compressed or uncompressed vectorized formats so that we can, we can optimize the bit per event count. And also we do this accumulated event formats, as I said before. And then we, 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 you can choose between one of two interfaces, this parallel interface that gives you this very low latency, very low power connectivity to, to neuromorphic compute platforms, for example, or this, the MIP interfaces, which is a high bandwidth, high performance interface, for example, for mobile uh, application processors and the like. And the last thing I want to highlight, because I think this is very important too, are the different power modes that we have in, in this chip that starts from, from the, 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 the most basic, we call it PM0. This is a, a power mode where basically almost everything is off except the, the photodiodes are connected in the, as I said, as I showed before to this, to this uh, contrast detector global architecture that, that um, turns the chip basically into a, a an activity detector sim similarly to a PIR. And you can, you can act then detect activity in the scene and, and, and then cycle through these different power modes that I build a hierarchy here. We switch on different parts of the chip in response to the activity the chip sees going from, from this very low uh, simple activity monitor, more sophisticated activity monitoring based on, on data statistics, et cetera, to, to um, even more, more sophisticated uh, uh, detection and also analysis of, of activity with the full array implementation to uh, uh, activation to um, full streaming modes. And just here for a, for a few numbers, so in this, in this super low power mode that where the chip just, uh, just sits there, this is really an always on feature. It runs at 35 microwatts, so you can really have this, this always on and, and you are the activity that, that the, the chip detects in this, in this in this, in this configuration can then be used to wake up itself on activity so that it, it, you go to, to higher power modes or you also can produce wake up signals to your system to, 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 to start waking up your, your processing platform. The other power modes then, of course, they, they have higher consumption. So there's this the second level where we switch on the, the CPU to do more and more data statistics, etc., that help you better understand what you are seeing. To switch on yourself or your system, up to the power modes where you where you do full streaming, either using the parallel interface or the MIP interface, and then it goes up to single-digit milliwatts for the parallel and about 20 to a bit more than 20 for if you use the MIP interface. So this is a breakdown of power consumption between the two interfaces. And you see that MIP, of course, you have this all this overhead of the MIP interface that makes the, the sensor consume more power for the interface actually than for anything else. Using the parallel interface, it's, this, is, this ratio is a bit better. So for, for really embedded um, vision applications at the edge, of course, the CPI interface would be the one that you would like to choose. And I conclude here, so this, this is what, I, what we believe because the adoption of, of event vision in, in this space has been more painful than we have actually anticipated. So we, we thought that we need to do something about it and, and build this, uh, all these, these features into, into the sensor that, that help the, the, the system integrators and the users of these of this sensors to, to build at the edge vision systems that 
that do everything what, what these systems are supposed to do, being ultra low power at the same time and, and, and producing performance that, that is adequate for the, for the application in, at hand. So and this is just a summary of what I've shown before and I hope I didn't exceed my time. I tried to be very fast, so I'm done with that. Thank you everyone.